Hey everyone, it is always to be grateful, thankful to be here to share some of the knowledge combined with experience. <laughs> because only knowledge will relieve the pain and suffering. So I am very glad today to share the most important knowledge. It is also about the first step of yoga, yama. We have to touch a little bit about the second step in order to explain the first step. So with technology today, we have infinite numbers of galaxies and blue planets. Lots of people everywhere. <laughs> Lots of pain and suffering going on all the time. One of the reasons of pain and suffering is has a purpose for the cleaning of the mind. And then you will be able to enter the kingdom of God. So, before the Big Bang, <laughs> there are many Big Bangs, not the one that the scientists are concentrated. One of the scientists already realized the numbers of Big Bang is infinite. <laughs> now, according to some sages and yogis who spent a whole life in cave, in order to be able to use their psychic center, how to say, the senses of perception, to reach their psychic ability to its best, they realized that in the right side of the heart, in human beings, maybe in other beings too, Dwelling there subtler than an atom, there is a portion of this infinite intelligence, the nectar of intelligence that some people call it God. So, <clears throat> in reality, you are a portion of God dwelling in the right side of the heart. From there, all the intelligence that keeps this entire body, this computer going on, comes from there. There are psychic channels, the wiring system for the prana to go everywhere. There are about 72,000. And according to some psychic, there are over 350,000. According to Swami Ayenga, if you put all these psychic channels in one line, it may go around the planet. They are extremely subtle. Some of them are 1,000 thinner than a hair in order to carry intelligence to the chakras. The chakras are like software in your body. Organs and glands near them are controlled by them. Anyway, as soon as you came to existence, now you have to be ready for the next. When you first time you came to existence, assuming life, two cells, boop, 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 become two, become three, become fish, come out, dinosaurs, then monkey, and then cavemen, right? So, we are relying in happiness from the sense object. Since you came to existence, you are not resting on your own nature anymore. You rely in happiness from outside. For example, 10% of of your happiness is from food. Everybody's different. <laughs> Ten percent from sex. Ten percent from your parents. 
10% from your possessions. If you own a nice car, iPhone, high definition TV, you understand, add another 10%. If you have money in the bank, you have a nice job that you like, you feel much happier. Right? And then comes what? If you look in the mirror and look, you are happy the way you look like, add another 80%. In my case, 0%. <laughs> I heard that Queen Elizabeth ordered some people to remove some mirrors from the castle. <laughs> she cannot handle holding, looking at herself anymore. So, <clears throat> to lots of pain and suffering. All these happiness, one by one, you cannot hold them. You know, but you don't think about it. As you're getting old, passion will be gone, right? Your job, you, can, you have to retire. You will lose even your driving license because you're getting senile. So everything goes. So there is pain and suffering for those who are identified with the body and the mind because they are not permanent. Even the bliss from your meditation, they are not permanent. In order to experience samadhi, you need senses of perception, astral senses of perception to experience samadhi. Also, you can see yourself, the mind experiencing samadhi. So that is something else. Anyway, you have to learn through all this that we are the inmost self. In every being, a portion of God is dwelling there, equally present in all beings. The Hare Krishna people in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, there is a page with a beautiful drawing. In this drawing, you see animals, saints, tree, insects. Every one of them has a tiny picture of Krishna. Krishna represents this portion of God. So in no beings, God is dwelling there as the self. So everyone needs the self. If you remove the self from there, you'll be like in coma or in deep sleep. So all beings love life. They are like us. They want to be happy. They fear violence. So we have to learn how to place ourselves in other. I think it, compassion started when you became a, a caveman. You have a little compassion with limit towards your son and wife. But if you touch his place, <laughs> you may be hit in the head with a big bone. So the compassion is very little. So as you grow spiritually, incarnation after incarnation, through lots of pain, delusion, suffering, our compassion starts getting better. Some senses of perception start getting available according to the degree, to the degree of your compassion. Without compassion, you'll never be able to be obedient to your teacher. You'll never be able to have the ability to see what is real, what is not real. Compassion is amazing. If you update your compassion beyond your pets, Today, most people, right, the compassion go, go only up to the pets. After the pets, they see the animals as food. That's why you see the world like this, pain and suffering, war. What is the cause of all the war that you see around? Terrorism and all this, fight. People are not keeping compassion properly. <laughs> if they could 
themselves in others, there, there will be harmony and love. So yama, without yama, you will never develop a strong desire for liberation, to inquire, who am I? If I die tonight, where am I going? <laughs> Why some people are suffering and some people are not suffering? Right? You'll never be able to find out all these things. If you keep compassion up to the limit, that is to say, to be extremely respectful, reverent, compassionate to all beings. That includes the piggy, the cow, the chicken, the fish, and the babies inside the eggs. <laughs> and then amazing thing happens. Some senses of perception is available for you. When you read the scripture or hear words from your master or your spiritual preceptor, there is reincarnation. You almost sense their presence. You almost can sense it. As your compassion proves a little more, you'll be able to sense the presence of this infinite being, where you came from, of God. You almost can sense their presence here. First here, of course, you realize that it is everywhere. That is the power of compassion. So you'll be able to believe in something that you don't have evidence, because the physical senses cannot sense them. If you don't have the astral senses of perception, if your religion says, love your neighbors, you have to pretend you're loving because you don't feel it naturally, you understand? You, you treat everybody nicely, but inside you don't really love you. I don't love you. <laughs> but when you realize you have these senses of perception available, you are able to place yourself in others. That is the first step of self-realization. Something last week happened to me. Now, I have a house in Long Island, and the ceiling was molding on the basement. And then my wife suggests, why don't you put some wax there? I took a roller, put some, not wax, bleach. I put the bleach in the can, get the roller. Right? And then I saw a tiny spider with the web. And then I keep thinking like this, shall I go over, it's so little, small. And then I place myself in the spider for one second, where oh, it hurts the eyes, bleaching the eyes and the mouth, it's terrible. <laughs> and then I hold it all like this and try to remove the spider. And then I press the, uh, the roller in the ceiling, a chunk of uh, bleach came to this eye. I was in the basement, I ran out to go to the pool and dip my water in the pool to wash the, the wax. And then it looked like uh, I had the paper inside, it was a terrible feeling. And the pain, you cannot imagine. And then I look in the mirror, I saw the film getting gray and breaking. And then my daughter said, we run to the hospital, and then they wash me. And then after two days, it became normal. But I learned a lesson. It hurts. <laughs> so next time, I make sure there is no insects there. Even when I walk, make sure you are not step on the ants. If you keep yama properly, compassion, you don't have to worry about thou shall not steal, thou shall not lie, thou shall not commit adultery. Let's say, for example, let's say I am very respectful to you, reverent, compassionate. How can I lie to you? How can I steal from you? You see, if people keep thou shall not kill properly, thou shall not kill does not mean to kill another human being. Do not kill the comfort, 
happiness of only living beings. Remember, all beings pass through everything. If you could trace myself back a few lives, I was killing children just for fun. <laughs> well, don't take this in a negative way. What I'm trying to say, everybody deep into the past, you do amazing, terrible things. You understand? So everybody, when your soul is getting old enough now, you are trying to do yoga, seeking self-knowledge. You understand? You are trying to find answers. All these are one thing, compassion. See yourself in others. You can meditate, sit in a chair, and concentrate on compassion. Meditate on compassion. Look, use your intelligence. Look at most of the spiritual beings that you know nowadays. Do you see them eating spare ribs? <laughs> Did you ever see Jesus eating spare ribs or eating frankfurters? Did you ever see Satchirananda feasting chicken? <laughs> you don't see even Dalai Lama. Did you ever see him, him feasting in steaks and things and lobsters? No. Why the aliens never land here? They have powerful telescopes. They zoom into the McDonald's or Burger King or and see people eating animals. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what's happened also? If you keep compassion, automatically you become vegetarian. You don't see a beef as beef anymore. You see, like human flesh. Use your intelligence. After the animals die, what it becomes? Cadaver, corpus. Cadaver, corpus. And your house become what? A morgue. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Jesus, Buddha, going to visit your house? No. You are eating your own children. I was born eating steak. My father was a farmer, but I never liked that. Soon, my mother divorced my father for some reason. I became vegetarian. And then I was always trying to find out what is real, right? And then your meditation answers, you start being filled with light and joy. So, if you want to find out how civilized you are, is the way you eat and treat the animals. Are you agree with that? Since you didn't know about it before, whatever you did before, don't, don't worry, you didn't commit any sin. Now that you know, watch out. <laughs> and then now you're going to pay for your actions. <laughs> <laughs> and then your meditation goes nowhere. As you go deep in meditation, your mind becomes calm. You start remembering everything you have done in the past. And that is a problem. You feel so terrible. Right? If you go to my place, I have four dogs, two cats. We rescue lots of animals. I keep remembering, let's say, someone that I hurt in the past, an animal or a dog. Please, next life come to my house as my children or as, as my pet. All my pets are almost vegetarian, vegan. They are really happy and they last a long time. So that's how you make up for your dawn from the past. Now I have all the pets to make up some of my mistakes. 
is by doing that that your meditation go really deep. You don't have to do asanas. You don't have to do even pranayama. If you concentrate just on compassion, you really become a yogi, and very soon you realize we are this, this portion of God. So, very simple and easy. You may have everything now, beautiful family, beautiful weather, you are here on the wanderlust, beautiful boyfriend, the latest car. But if you are stuffed with bacon, scrambled eggs and burgers, how are you going to enjoy anything? Your meditation go nowhere. Every night when your senses are red, how to say, satisfied with all the other things, you end up in a terrible void. You're still happy because you're going to repeat it next day. You even may have some spiritual knowledge now, but if you are not in a good diet, healthy, your senses of perception cannot experience bliss. This is what I have to say. Believe or not. So it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, actually, I've been teaching vinyasa for over 25 years. And when I started yoga, uh, it was really through meditation when I was 14.